passengers are advised not to leave baggage unattended. Inside Southwest Florida International. It is the time remaining, 28 minutes. It's only fitting. Oh God, I'm freaking out. My palms are sweaty. <laughs> Lisa Barella waited 54 years for today. Taxi. Now, thanks to winter weather. Oh my God. Ma. She'll need to wait one hour more. I'm trying not to think about it, I don't think too much. Until he lands, then I'll be like, ah. Oh my God. Because never before has Lisa met her biological dad. I was adopted as an infant by wonderful, amazing, hardworking and loving parents. Um, and yet I couldn't have children of my own. So this uh, biological connection to be able to meet my father is that much more meaningful for me. Last year, so. Lisa found her father on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> I saw his name, Felice Giampa. Yeah. Where, is it coming which way? We have talked every day since then. Soon, a 22-hour journey that began in Calabria, Italy, will end in Fort Myers. There's nothing I wanted from him. I just wanted to be able to look into his eyes and see his smile. And now I'm going to be able to do that in just a little bit. So it's pretty amazing. I'm sorry. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Those folks arrived in the Alpha of the United Flight. I'm starting to see like a bunch of people coming out. As hours turn to minutes. Do players. we know if he's deplaning yet? One by one, people pass. Yes, I think I see him out on the right. Yep, that's him. Then the moment <laughs> arrives. <laughs> oh, God. What is the... Careful. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. oh, my goodness. <laughs> Sweet, sweet, I love you. <laughs> After 54 years, Lisa finally looked into her father's eyes and saw his smile. It's priceless. Oh, yeah. I'd wait another 54 years. <laughs> Instead, they'll start the rest of their lives hand in hand, daughter and dad. Oh, you're nice and tall. <laughs> I'm sure. In Fort Myers, Sean Martinelli. NBC2. It doesn't take much to pack a bar on Fort Myers Beach, but for 11 a.m. on a Wednesday, this is saying something. You'd think they're here for the booze. Okay, so. Instead, they're here for Betty. What are we up to? She's just a legend. It's just amazing. Everybody knows Betty. <laughs> Tina Tomasino owns Hurricane Tina's, one of several spots where Betty Kai still tends bar. To see what's left of my cousins. At 96. <laughs> okay. I'm out living them all. Okay. And then. <laughs> you gotta love her. If you know where you love her. She's the only one that can yell at me behind the bar. For decades, Betty owned a bar in Wisconsin. 33 years ago, she sold it to retire. From there on, it's been <laughs> one place or another. <laughs> Although we're not exactly sure she knows the definition of retirement. I've been working on the beach for 33 years. Wow. Somewhere. Her current schedule rivals that of a hustling 20-something. Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, and Monday Gypsy night. Kind of like uh -huh. that and then... The on Sunday afternoons, usually. And just like our camera couldn't keep up with Betty, neither can her customers. Eight dollars, honey. Oh, okay. and they'll, they'll say, oh, you're 92. No, I'm going to be 96. A few years shy of being the oldest bartender in America. But I'm the oldest on the beach. <laughs> that in and of itself would be impressive enough. But that's not all. She's a uh, minister, licensed, and you, you probably knew that. The only time I put makeup on is for a wedding. But. A licensed minister who's officiated more than 500 ceremonies. Yeah. And there's more. Up until recently, she was doing landscaping for somebody. She was she was taking care of seven houses. I, I got a couple pictures of that. I had a nice John Deere to do the big yards. Juggling all of those jobs could be a circus act, though Betty 
yep. already was. And she was uh, a member of the Ringling Brothers Circus. If only we had pictures of that. <laughs> Just, you know, use your imagination. <laughs> Despite the different directions, Betty's life has turned. I gotta make change. She always finds her way back here. What has kept you doing it all these years? The people. The people. Yeah. You can't ask for more than that. Friendship. To me. If you're gonna live to be 90, that's who you wanna be, is Betty. A woman who continues raising and tending the bar. They ought to hire you down at Margaritaville. I already have a job down there. Oh, you do? <laughs> <laughs> On Fort Myers Beach, Sean Martinelli. Well, I don't know when I'm going to work there, though. NBC2. I know, but what, when am I going to work? Over the holidays, I downloaded an app called StoryCorps. If you're not familiar, StoryCorps is a nonprofit whose mission is to preserve and share humanity's stories. We can find wisdom and poetry all around us. All we have to do is listen. You use your phone, they give you some suggested questions, and you have a conversation with someone you love. Those interviews are then archived in the Library of Congress. Ask simple questions like, what are you most grateful for? How do you want to be remembered? Then listen. It's I did one with my grandfather, Michael Flaherty, and I learned things about him I never knew. I want to share some of our conversation in hopes you'll consider participating in this project, too. Can you tell me about one of your happiest memories? Probably realizing uh, my future wife was the person I wanted to marry. It wasn't like a, a flash of lightning. It was just something that you realized that that was probably the person for you. What are your hopes for me, my children? I, I, my, I guess if I really thought about it, that you get to live the life you want. Mm -hmm. And uh, that at the end of it, you can look back on it and say, it wasn't perfect, um, but it was good. If this was to be our very last conversation, is there anything you'd want to say to me? Yes, I'd say, Sean, I love you, I love you since you were born, and that will never go away. When I asked my grandpa his favorite memories of me, he couldn't think of much. At 88, those memories are fading, but mine are still vivid. I remember the birthdays. You're growing up too fast, Sean. I wish you would stay young. The milestones and all those Christmas Eve dinners. And I'm glad you're all here. That's why at the end of our interview, when StoryCorps suggests you tell the interviewee what they've meant to you, I didn't have words. For the last part of the interview, I'm supposed to tell you what you've meant to me. And I always get emotional when I think about it. It's okay, Sean. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. It's good that it's emotional. It's good that you have, uh, see, I never, I never got to know my grandfathers, okay? So I'm glad you have, I'm glad to get to know your grandfather. <laughs> good, bad, or different, it's a good thing. People often ask me what's been my most memorable interview. Now I have a new answer. Thanks to StoryCorps, it was the one with that man, my grandfather. Sean Martinelli, NBC2.